on today's episode, the Rockford Ice Hogs picked up a massive win in game one over the Texas Stars last night with top prospect Lucas Reichel netting his first career AHL postseason goal. Then in the Stanley Cup playoffs, Marc-Andre Fleury backstopped the Minnesota Wild to a 6-2 win over the St. Louis Blues as well. And then earlier this morning, three Blackhawks were announced as part of Team USA's roster for the upcoming 2022 IIHF World Championships. All that and plenty more right here on Lockdown Blackhawks. Your Locked On Blackhawks, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in to the Locked On Blackhawks podcast, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Today is Thursday, May 5th. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can find me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman 2 or you could also go and check out my Strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. And if you're listening to the audio version of today's podcast and you like what you're hearing, then please go and show some support first by following the podcast. It'll only take a quick couple of seconds. Literally just a quick click of the button is going to help me out tremendously. Go and leave the show five stars if you like what you're hearing today as well. And then if you're tuning in through Apple Podcasts or through Spotify, then feel free to go and leave me a review. I greatly appreciate always getting feedback from my tremendous listeners out there. And best of all, it's 100% for free wherever you may be listening to your podcast, whether that be through Apple Podcasts, Odyssey, Spotify, Google Podcasts, etc. It's all 100% for free. And if you go and follow the show right now, then you'll be able to get the latest episode as soon as it comes out each day. And if you're not already watching the video version of today's episode, then you got to go check out Lockdown Blackhawks on YouTube because each and every episode from here on out, folks, is going to have a video version attached to it as well. So if you haven't done so yet, please, please, please go and subscribe to Lockdown Blackhawks on YouTube. Go and smash the like button for me and be sure to turn on those push notifications as well so that you can be notified when the episode gets uploaded to YouTube each and every day. All right, good afternoon, everyone, and as always, thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Lockdown Blackhawks, your one-stop shop for all things Chicago Blackhawks and for making the show your first listen here to start off your day. And to open things up this afternoon, let's begin by discussing the Rockford Ice Hogs defeating the Texas Stars 2-1 to last night in Game 1 of their best of three first round series. And I actually wasn't able to catch the game last night, but I did go and purchase AHL TV earlier this morning and took the time to watch game one from start to finish, as I will be doing for the remainder of the Ice Hogs postseason run. Uh, hopefully for my wallet's sake, uh, it's going to be longer than just the next couple of days. And the Ice Hogs got off on the right foot of ensuring just that won't happen with their game one win last night over Texas. And overall, this was a super exciting and fun back and forth game to watch. You can tell in the first period, it was a little bit of a feeling out process, but there was a, a good pace to this one right out of the gate. Uh, a lot of back and forth action, as I said, although there weren't too many high danger scoring opportunities for either side. Um, but you know, you could tell that it, it was definitely a playoff atmosphere. Things were tight. Everyone was making the safe plays. Uh, there was a lot of physicality, which I got to give a ton of credit to the ice hogs fourth line, specifically Dmitry Osipov and Curtis Gabriel, who were throwing big hits seemingly every time they were on the ice. Uh, but overall for this being, you know, the first game of playoff experience for damn near the entire ice hogs roster, uh, I thought they handled this this atmosphere and the playoff intensity very well. And actually, the Ice Hogs have the third youngest roster of any team in the AHL this season. They got tons of youth up and down the lineup. And that's why uh, this playoff opportunity is so exciting to watch for us Blackhawks fans because it's a great experience for a bunch of young players who are going to be trying to make the jump up to the NHL level with the Blackhawks in the next couple of years but following a scoreless first period, as I said, kind of just a 
feeling out process in the opening 20 minutes. But then in the second, Lucas Reichel kicked off the scoring after a beautiful feed from Michael Tepley. That was Reichel's first career AHL postseason goal and continues to lead the way offensively for the Ice Hogs. Uh, you could tell just his stick handling and his speed, it's noticeable every time he's on the ice. And he had another really good showing last night in his first uh, AHL playoff action. I thought that top line of he, Tepley, and DJ Buzdeeker, who's actually uh, in for Andre Altibarmaki, and I thought that top line was probably the best for Rockford last night. But it was a little odd, I got to say, to see uh, Al- Altibarmaki, and excuse me, it's a little bit of a tongue twister there. Uh, it was a little bit weird to see Alti not a part of the Ice Hogs lineup because down the stretch there, he was having massive success on that top line with Reichel and Tepley. I'm not sure if his scratching was injury related or not, uh, but definitely a little bit odd to see him not be a part of the lineup. Also, someone who, uh, someone who also was not a part of the lineup last night for Rockford was Nicholas Bodan, which is... Uh, certainly not a good sign for his progression, getting scratched in game one of the AHL playoffs. You got to be at least a little bit concerned about Bodan, a former first round picks future here with the Blackhawks at this point after he had a, a real, really brutal go of it uh, down with the Ice Hogs this year. We'll see if he's going to draw into the lineup tomorrow night for game two. Uh, but Reichel's goal put the Ice Hogs ahead one to nothing after the second period. And then early on in the third, uh, Carson Gusevitz redirected a shot from Isaac Phillips at the point to double the Ice Hogs lead to two to nothing. That was also Gusevitz's first AHL playoff tally as well. And I thought he and Dylan McLaughlin uh, on the second line last night were both really impressive too and created plenty of scoring opportunities. So fitting that they contributed for the second goal of the game for the Hogs. Uh, Texas did go on to respond basically the next shift after in order to cut the deficit to two to one, which made things a bit more interesting down the stretch. Uh, But in the final minutes, Arvid Soderblom made a couple of big stops to hold on to the two to one victory. Soderblom finished with 33 saves on the night. And I thought uh, overall, he looked really solid. The only kind of woes I thought he had was when he was playing the puck a couple of bad turnovers of his own fortunately didn't end up in the back of his net but aside from that I thought he was really solid all in all and as I said was a big part in the Ice Hogs holding on in the final few minutes Uh, and the lone goal that he did surrender there came after a defensive blunder along the boards from Jakob Galvis and Evan Barrett so Soderblom continues to just be a sturdy presence in net for the Ice Hogs, and they now have a chance to close out the series tomorrow night at the BMO in Game 2 at 7 p.m. Central Time. All right, there is a quick recap of the Rockford Ice Hogs 2-1 to win over the Texas Stars in Game 1. Coming up in just a moment, I will get into Marc-Andre Fleury picking up his first victory of the Stanley Cup playoffs last night as well. But first, I need to talk to you all about rockauto.com. Rock Auto is a family business that's been serving auto parts customers and do-it-yourselfers online for over 20 years. Go to rockauto.com to save both money and time while shopping for auto and body parts from hundreds of different manufacturers. Why would you choose to spend 30%, 50%, or even 100% more for the exact exact same auto parts at a chain store or at a new car dealership. Chain chain stores and car dealerships have different price tiers for professional mechanics and do-it-yourselfers, but rockauto.com's prices are the same for everybody, and they're always reliably low because you can cut out the middleman. And the rockauto.com catalog is also remarkably unique and super easy to navigate. You can quickly see all the parts available for your vehicle, from motor oil to tail lamps and even carpet, And you can also choose the brand's specifications and the prices that you prefer. Best of all, those prices at rockauto.com are always reliably low and the same for professional mechanics and do-it-yourselfers. So I spend up to twice as much money for the same parts when you can go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts that you will ever need for your car or truck for the best possible prices. And be sure to let them know that the Lockdown Podcast Network sent you. All right, we're back here on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast. Moving on into segment two today, let's get into some news on the Stanley Cup playoffs where 
last night. Marc-Andre Fleury backstopped the Minnesota Wild to a 6-2 victory in Game 2 over the St. Louis Blues, picking up his first win here of the new postseason. And of course, the conditional pick that the Blackhawks acquired from Minnesota in exchange for Flurry back at the trade deadline states that if the Wild reach the Western Conference final and Flurry picks up four of the eight wins necessary to do so, then the Blackhawks will receive a first round pick in this year's NHL draft rather than a second. So we're all aboard the Wild train right now, Blackhawks fans. We need them to win this series, and we also need Flurry to remain their starter in net. And I will say, after he gave up a four in a lopsided game one loss, I was a little bit concerned that wild coach Dean Evason would go with Cam Talbot in net for game two, but he ended up sticking with Flurry, and that wound up being a pretty good choice based on what we saw last night. So if Flurry keeps performing the way that uh, the way that he was last night, if he keeps playing well, then he should remain the starter for the wild here in the postseason it's his job to lose right now and that's exactly how us Blackhawks fans want it to continue another interesting tidbit in the Stanley Cup playoffs that affects the Blackhawks draft picks this year is what we saw from Duncan Keith and the Edmonton Oilers last night because if you all remember correctly I know this was a long time ago and so much has happened since then Uh, but the conditions for the trade of Duncan Keith state that if Keith is among uh, the Oilers top four defensemen in terms of average time on ice through three rounds of the Stanley cup playoffs and the Oilers reach the Stanley cup final, then the third round pick that the Hawks received from Edmonton for Keith will turn into a second round pick this year. So that obviously, you know, seems a little bit more far fetched than uh, the flurry conditional pick uh, with the Oilers having to reach the Stanley cup final. But on the bright side, Keith did rank second among Oilers defensemen last night in their game two victory over the Kings. So at least we're on the right track in that department. And uh, hopefully the Wild and the Oilers are the ones meeting up with each other in the Western Conference final, because that would be an ideal scenario for the Chicago Blackhawks and their current rebuild. All right, there are some quick thoughts on a couple of former Blackhawks in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Coming up in just a moment, I will get into the three Hawks that were announced as part of Team USA's roster for the 2022 IIHF World Championship. But first, I need to talk to you all about Built Bar, which is a protein bar that tastes just like a candy bar. Summer is coming, and you're going to need some food for being on the go. Well, Built Bars are the perfect snack to take with you everywhere you go. Throw them into your bags. Throw them into your kids' backpacks and make sure that everyone has a bar to be fueled for their summer adventures. And the best part about Built Bars is that they're both delicious and healthy. So there's no more sacrificing delicious foods for health because with Built Bar, you can have both. And have you tried Built Bar Puffs yet? Because if not, then you're seriously missing out on one of the best tasting protein bars on the market with flavors like banana cream pie and cinnamon churro, which I actually got to try the cinnamon churro not too long ago, and they are truly amazing. It's like a toasted marshmallow in a protein bar that's actually good for you and has tons of protein, at least 17 grams or possibly more, depending on the flavor. So best of all, Built Bar is hooking you up right now. If you head on over to Built.com and use the promo code LOCKED15, then you'll be able to get 15% off your next order. That's Built.com with the exclusive promo code LOCKED15, one word LOCKED in all caps, followed by the number 15 to receive 15% off your next Built Bar order. Welcome back to the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. Moving on into segment three here before I wrap things up, I also wanted to get into the Blackhawks having three players that will be suiting up for Team USA here in the 2022 IIHF World Championship, which begin next week in Finland, by the way. Caleb Jones, Seth Jones, and Sam Lafferty all will be a part of Team USA's roster for the tournament, and that's going to be just another great experience for all three. For Seth, he's probably the top player on the team, if I'm being honest, and is probably going to be heavily leaned on with a lot of younger players uh, filling out the roster, to be honest. 
by the way, this roster for Team USA is not very good. I haven't seen the rosters for any of the other countries, but uh, can't imagine the United States is going to be competing for the gold medal there. Um, but Seth is probably going to be the anchor on the back end. Caleb is also going to be in the mix on defense as well. And I think this could also serve as just another opportunity for the Blackhawks to kind of see where his game is at uh, before making a decision on him as a restricted free agent this summer, which is going to be a very interesting topic of conversation because Caleb still has some had some blunders defensively throughout the year. But on the offensive side of things, he set a lot of new career highs and was one of the few uh, Blackhawks defensemen that could actually find the back of the net this year, tying his brother Seth for the team lead among defensemen in goals. Uh, but with plenty of defensemen trying to make that jump up to the NHL in the next couple of years, I don't know simply if the Hawks are going to have room for Caleb on the back end going forward. So that's going to be an interesting decision that Kyle Davidson and the front office are going to have to come to sometime this summer. And then for Lafferty, what a pleasant surprise it is to see him be a part of this roster after fully taking advantage of his opportunity with the Blackhawks this season. What a trade that looks to be by Kyle Davidson, by the way. Alex Nylander still playing AHL hockey for like the sixth year of his career, while Sam Lafferty immediately became uh, a huge impact, consistent impact, I thought, for the Blackhawks in their final 50 games or whatever it was that he was a part of the team. Um, but yeah, this is going to be another great experience for Lafferty, and I'm definitely excited to see um, more of him playing some valuable hockey here in the next couple of weeks. And then also two former Blackhawks are going to be a part of the roster for Team USA as well in John Hayden and Adam Gaudet, both of which uh, many fans thought were going to play much larger impacts than they ended up doing. I remember a time like four or five years ago where I was super pumped about the future of John Hayden. I believe he scored a goal in his first game uh, first NHL game with the Blackhawks, if I remember correctly. Don't quote me on that. Uh, and then for Gaudet, um, many folks around the team thought this was going to be a breakout season for him in Chicago, but ultimately ended up getting traded to the Ottawa Senators very early on in the season, which uh, certainly uh, put a disappointing end to his Blackhawks tenure. But it's going to be fun, you know, to see both those former Hawks and current members of the team suit up for the 2022 World Championships, which again, begin in Finland next week. And I'll be sure to keep you all caught up on that right here on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast. All right, folks, I think that is going to wrap up Thursday, May 5th episode of Lockdown Blackhawks. Thank you all again for tuning into the show and be sure to go and follow the podcast on your favorite podcast app and to go and subscribe to Lockdown Blackhawks on YouTube and you'll be able to get the latest episode as soon as it comes out each day. And after the show, be sure to go and check out Lockdown NHL for all the latest info on every team in the Stanley Cup playoffs. It's free and available on all platforms, so be sure to check out Lockdown NHL right now wherever you get your podcasts. Once again, thank you for tuning into today's episode. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can find me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman2, or you could also go and check out my Strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. And for any questions at all regarding anything related to the team or to the show, feel free to email LockdownBlackhawks at gmail.com. You can also hit me up on any one of my Twitter accounts, or you can call 708-653-0572 to leave a voicemail. So until tomorrow's episode, thanks again for tuning into the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.